Right, well, I know it's Friday, uh, but I haven't done a thing on the ambulance all week, but I have been doing this. So I decided to go over to Steve's and uh, hunt around in his uh, heap of usefulness, we'll call it, for a hydraulic motor, because I've had an idea, and this is the idea here. I want to make a hydraulic version of the peg on the end of my bench there. So I can feed metal in and it'll hydraulically turn and bend the metal. I can also make different top plates to make spirals and scrolls and all sorts of different things. So that's the idea. So I went into my scrap pile and found, now Adam says these are Chieftain track links and they were certainly very, very hard metal. So they're going to be the main bending pins. Uh, so they'll, one will revolve around the other that will give us the bends and, and as you can see here the blade on the bandsaw was flexing trying to uh, bend them and uh, certainly on the lathe we had rather a lot of sparks as we got through the crust so the idea here is to uh, machine up the end so it becomes a dowel to sit into the top plate make it removable and that'll give it a nice strong mechanical purchase uh, so we can weld it from the back um, but it'll also have that dowel to, to act against so we've got two of those, and then by comparison, here's some uh, ordinary mild steel. Look at the ribbons of metal, metal coming off this. Much, much softer. And that'll become a, a boss for the pin to go in. So those are machined up there. And then another piece of metal in my scrap pile was this, uh, it looked like it'd been under the sea for years. Uh, and it required me to change the chuck over so I can have some external jaws, which is a job I always enjoy. But as you can see, you can literally turn scrap into new metal on a lathe, uh, facing off all the rust, took a few passes, this is sped up, but very satisfying nonetheless. And then faced up the other side, I am aware that the hole in the middle is not in the middle. Uh, I then used the boring bar to open that up and get it centralised. But there we go, automatic feed, chipping away, beautiful. One could almost say therapeutic. I certainly find it very therapeutic and it was nice to have a day on the lathe. So there we go, that's that machined up, much better. Quite the transformation. So here's a hydraulic motor. Now this green part on the end, uh, I think is a hydraulic or an air brake. This is off uh, one of Steve's balers, and sorry, one of the wrappers, the wraps of bales. Uh, I think the idea is that when the uh, motor stops where you want it, uh, it engages a brake so it, it stops dead and doesn't spool down. So it took a bit of figuring out how to get this off. Uh, if in doubt, hit it with a hammer. Um, although that, that only partially worked, I did then have to fiddle around and take a lot of uh, clutch plates out. But anyway, we did get it off in the end. So uh, thank you very much, Steve, for uh, donating this motor to the cause. There it is there, to get it apart. and. It was handy because the uh, brake had this spindle in it which has got a, uh, a keyed shaft in it and we we're going to use that so we machined out our disc a bit more and then used the hydraulic press uh, to push it in. So I'm using the uh, pump, the hydraulic pump off the press is going to be used to run this uh, hydraulic rotisserie as well. So I did cover up the bed on the lathe uh, but this is a bit, bit of a different idea using the lathe uh, out of gear to manually rotate it to uh, weld around the shaft which worked rather well but you don't want to splatter in your bedways uh, so there we go so that became a part now and then using a piece of tube just to pack out the top uh, so it's the same diameter all the way long there's the track pin in there and uh, then time to make a bit of a frame to support it all so my idea here is to have this so that it goes where the manual peg is on the edge of the bench and it's removable uh, so here's this frame to mirror the holes on the uh, manual peg. So let's just offer it up and tack it in position. Uh, this way I can move it out of the way when I don't want it. Uh, when I do want to do a lot of uh, bending, I can, I can put it on there and, and use it. And as I say, the idea is, is that silver disc, uh, which is my bending attachment, lifts off the uh, keyed drive shaft and I can put different top plates on, some of them with scroll jigs on or whatever it is I want to do and uh, use it to bend those. So it's like a rotary bender. So there we go. Frame needs a bit of tidying up, but it'll do for uh, experimental purposes. So the hydraulic hose has arrived and the spool valve. I'm not quite sure where to mount that yet. It doesn't want to get in the way, uh, but it wants to be somewhere that obviously moves with the machine, but is also 
means that it's versatile because I, I might want to mount this the other way up. Uh, I, I realised if I mounted a chuck onto this as well, I could use it if I heated metal for putting twists into things. So it could be quite versatile. It's the thing when you're making your own machines, try to think as broadly as possible because you don't always know what you're going to end up using the machine for until you've made it and played with it. Sometimes it, it tells you of other other things you can do with it. So try not to restrict yourself too much. That's one thing I've learned. So there we go. There's the pump off the hydraulic press and a new spool valve bleeding all the air out of it. And there we go, it's turning. It does turn a little bit quickly. Um, so I might put a uh, restrictor valve or flow control valve in so I can adjust what full ball speed is. Uh, it's not quite as powerful as I'd hoped it would be, but it is incredibly powerful. Its limit seems to be 14 mil OD bar. Uh, which is plenty um, and yeah it, it makes light work of this I can't remember if this is like 8 or 10 but uh, as you can see there's a piece of 14 mil bar on the bench there as it's turned into a uh, quite a mess and bear in mind that uh, coil springs and cars are made of about 14 mil uh, steel so it, you know it takes quite a lot of force to bend it so it is working well so what I need to do now is is I've got some big plates of metal as I need to make a scroll jig because uh, that's the main thing because then I can feed the metal in it'll bend it into a scroll and then I can cut it off uh, and it'll make the same scroll every time uh, and that's the thing with this sort of thing is you can have a repeatable outcome and it's quite good fun to use a machine that you've made yourself out of scrap so there we go that's that for that one ambulance video coming next Friday hope that's been interesting for some of you and uh, see you on the next one